yourself a mountain I won't tell it to be gone Well, when I see myself a mountain I won't tell it to be gone Well, if no one will help me I'll just praise him on my own Well, when that glory gets to moving I'm gonna get to moving too Well, when that glory gets to moving I'm gonna get to moving too Cause when that glory gets to moving He's gonna stop the healing too
Yeah. 
friend You're the best friend I've ever had <laughs> You've never left me Nor forsake me Thank you Jesus Thank you Jesus Thank you Jesus for working in my life <laughs> Thank you, Jesus, for working in my life. Yeah. Yeah. Because we've all tried some things that just didn't work. But I tell you right now, Jesus. Jesus. on the waves of the storm I have danced on the chains of my circumstance to walk on the waves of the storm because nothing is impossible for those who believe that God is love nothing is impossible for those who believe that God is love
can scale the wall, I can move a mount, I can slay the giant, cause you're on my side. I can raise the dead, free the nations, I can fly. Well, I can scale the wall, I can move a mount, I can slay the giant, cause you're on my side. I can raise the dead. step of the way. <laughs> God said with every wall that's fallen, I was there and you were with me. With every step I took upon the water, I was there and you were with me. Because God said I've carried you in my heart. <laughs> God said I've carried you in my heart. Since before time even began. Oh, you were not a mistake. You were not an accident. Oh, for I planned for you 
to be here in this very moment from the beginning of time. God said, I had it set up just for you to show up at the time that you did so that you can do exactly what you do. And God said, nobody else in the world can do what you are sent here to do. Nobody else can reach the people that you were sent here to reach. Hallelujah. God said, know who you are. Know who you are. Know who you are. Know who you belong to. Know who you came from. They know who you're going to. Thank you, Jesus. Because God is love. God is love. I won't be afraid. God is love. God is love. Nothing is impossible. Oh, I thank you, Jesus, for your holy, your holy, majestic, wonderful self just moving in this place this morning, God. Thank you for flooding this house this morning, Lord. I appreciate your presence, God. I appreciate your presence, Lord. Not just here on Sunday morning, but on Monday morning and Monday evening and Tuesday morning and Tuesday evening. I appreciate, I appreciate your constant presence in my life, your constant guidance, Lord. Oh, I love you so much. I want you in my way, God. Get in my way. Please get in my way, Lord. sick and I've raised the dead Lord
our mom team is going to come up. If you guys can be seated and keep that, oh, keep that, keep that praise going. Oh, just because just cause you touch the chair don't mean your praise has got to stop. Amen.
Somebody clap your hands, say he's just too good, just too good to not believe. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, give him your best. Give him your best. He's just too good, just too good to not believe. You know, you may be seated just for a moment. God is good. Amen. We know God is good. How many of you can testify in the room that uh, over the years, maybe your perspective on God has changed a lot? You know, I, I remember coming up in religion that was so difficult, you couldn't even get close to God. They told me, they said, if you'll do right, If you'll do right, God will bless you. But what I discovered is God will bless you. He'll empower you to do whatever you need to do. In the old covenant, you work for the blessing. In the new covenant, the blessing works for you. But, you know, I, I was thinking about just, you know, healing. You know, I, we were receiving testimonials of miracles uh, this morning of God doing just wonderful things in people's bodies. And I love the song he heals because he because he loves 
Thank you, Jesus. And aren't you glad that he loves you? Amen. I am loved. Just, just wave your hand and say, I am loved. Oh, how he loves me. So uh, I want to tell you something that uh, may surprise you. Okay, so it surprised me. Uh, you ready for this? Yeah, it surprised me. But, um, you know, I was, um, for whatever reason, the other morning it was brought to my attention, and I was, now you got to hear this right, okay, so I'll do my best so you can hear it right. But I, um, I was pondering some things before the Lord, and all of a sudden my, my, some of the things that I used to be involved in came to mind, you know, back in my, uh, don't hold it against me, back in my drug days and my drinking days and my barring days and all that, you know. And, you know, I was, uh, I met the Lord at a very young age, um, met, met Jesus in children's church. And uh, the thing that was predominant in my heart at that time is that he loved me. And um, Harry Clayton would tell me, oh, how Jesus loves David. And my little eyes, I was like, and I believed it. And it changed my world. I didn't backslide until I graduated children's church. And I got in the big church and they told me, oh, Jesus loves you, but. And that but got in my way. And they started giving me a list of rules. And I thought, man. And so I started trying to keep the rules and I couldn't keep them. And I kept messing up. And, and so it ingrained in my heart, Jesus loves me, but. Now, since that time, I've got my butt out of the way, right? Okay. Amen. Got my butt. My butt's not there anymore. But the other day, I had the Lord to say something to me, and this is for people, okay, because God will touch you right where you're at. He'll love you right where you're at. He'll never change his mind about you. He'll change your mind about you, but he won't change his mind about you. But, but the Lord was reminding me, he said, David, you know all those days that you were running? And I said, yes, sir. And he said, you didn't want to look me in the eye. I said, no, I acknowledged you, you know, peripheral. <laughs> but, but no, I didn't want to look you in the eye because I, I felt like I wasn't doing right. And so I, I was just kind of running from the Lord. But the Lord said to me, do, but do you realize that I never left you? And... You could have had a relationship with me while you were doing those things. So I figured it'd get a little quiet there. But you know, the, the tears just began to flow because he is too good to not believe. And, and if we'll just let him close, he is the best friend that you will ever have. Come on, somebody. Thank God for his friendship. So don't ever disqualify yourself. And don't ever allow anybody else to disqualify you. Come on. I am what I am by the grace of God. Hallelujah. And he loves me. Hallelujah. He loves me. He loves me. And why does God, how many of you know why God loves you? Because. Okay. Just because. It's not anything we did. He just loves us. And we're glad we serve a God like that. Amen. All right. Pastor Ray, come on up and receive the, the tithe and offering. She's whispering. She wants me to do it. So you come on up here and stand. Well, yes, ma'am, I got you. She reminds me of stuff I forget. Okay. All right. Yeah, so um, you can stand your feet with me here this morning. We're, we're actually going to receive two offerings. We'll do our tithe and our offering this morning. And if we got our buckets, we can go ahead and bring those, please, wherever they are. Yes, yes, ma'am. Let's do missions next week. Yes, ma'am. And I tell you what to do, leave the, the missions bucket up here, and we'll let that be the barber's bucket. Yes, barber, bucket. <laughs> barber bucket, that's got a good ring to it. So, so you know, your tithing offering will go to the, the right over here, and uh, your uh, barber uh, bucket is on the, the left over here. Praise God. Yes, and uh, yes, or you can, in your tithing offering, you can mark on your envelope that you want to uh, sew into the barber's and uh, we'll make sure they get it, okay? Amen. How many of you believe in being led by the Spirit? Yeah, yeah. Let, let's all be led of the Spirit right now. You know, I, uh, I love this couple. I appreciate them so much. They're, they're such good people, and, and they're just great friends of ours. And, you know, one thing I love about them, I love a lot about them, but one thing I love about them is just, just themselves. Every time I see them, I, 
I, I have a heart connection with this couple. And I wish I could say that about everybody. I can't, but I have a heart connection. There's not images and facades and trying to be something we're not. We just are what we are. Amen. And, um, and I told them last night in the, um, in the leadership meeting that uh, the Lord spoke a figure. And I think that you guys must have thought that it was some astronomical figure. It wasn't. God spoke to me and said, I want you and Ray to sow $200 into their life in this offering. And, uh, but then the Lord just prompted me and said, but if everyone in the building that has the ability to do that would do that, I could really boost this thing. And I thought, well, Lord, I really want to boost this thing because I'm, I'm telling you whenever, whenever, uh, yeah, yeah, just compound. But, uh, whenever, uh, you minister the word of the Lord, you know, the, the appreciation for them comes whenever they open the envelope and see the blessing and the honorarium that we gave. Okay. And so, you know, uh, you know at Word and Spirit, we never pull for money, do we? Amen. Amen. So look at your neighbor and say, the preacher can talk about my money this morning because he, he never pulls for it. They, right. We teach you the importance of finances, but we never pull for it. But, um, but, you know, I'm just in this place in my life where I just want to do what God does exactly the way God says do it. Do all things according to the pattern that I showed you in the mountain. If I show it to you in 4D, you come back down in 3D and you declare in this realm what you heard in that realm and heaven will come to earth, okay? So I got it and I put it out there, amen. So everybody lift your hands, lift your offering, your tithe before the Lord. Father, we thank you for your presence, your anointing. Oh, how wonderful you are, how glorious you are. We just give you all of the honor and the praise and the thanksgiving, Lord. And Father, we thank you for the seed, the ability to give. We, we understand, recognize where that ability come from. It came from you. And Lord, not only have you given a seed to sow, but you will multiply the seed that is sown. How good is that? Hallelujah. You're just too good, Lord. And so, Father, we thank you, Lord, for taking this money's increase it the same way you did the fishes and loaves. When that money goes into these buckets and these plates, we thank you for putting your hand in it and stretch it, multiply it, increase it. Whenever the ushers are taking it to the office, every step they take down that hall, Lord, just put more money in the plate. We thank you. We know you can do it. We know that you can, and we believe that you will, and we give you the glory, the praise, and the honor for it, and God's people said amen and amen. Hallelujah. Okay, so if we can do this without getting bunched up, you come and give your uh, tithe. Come on and bless the Lord. Hallelujah. If we got some music back there, Maestro. Thank you, Lord. Okay, praise God. Amen. Miss Diana, if we get that door shut on the side and get that taken care of, it's so good to see everyone out. It is a beautiful day. Wow. Yeah, amazing. The weather's just so extraordinary, and this is going to be a special, special day for, all, for everyone in the place. Praise God. Well, take your neighbor by the hand. We're just going to set our faith in agreement. Father, we thank you. Oh, God, we give you praise and glory and honor for the wonderful, wonderful things you're going to do in the room today. Hallelujah. One of the most powerful things, probably the most powerful thing God can do is talk. 
God speaks and worlds come into existence and ages are boxed in and framed and purposes are defined and hallelujah, he calls things that be not as though they were declaring the end from the beginning and man shall not live by bread alone but by every word of God. And Father, we thank you today. We're going to hear your word and we're going to live by that word. Father, we thank you for the barbers. We thank you for the blessing they are. Thank you for the anointing and the presence and the deposits in their lives. And Father, we open our heart to receive impartation today from your presence and your word. And we're careful to give you all the praise and the glory for it. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And God's people said amen and amen. Come on, would you clap your hands and make welcome Daryl and Donna Barber. Praise the Lord. Now give Jesus a big old shout. Come on, give Jesus a big old shout. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We're here for you today, Lord. All for your glory. All for your honor. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We bless you in the house this morning. You may be seated. A little bit of a... I don't know what to call it. A little bit of stuff I need to say first. <laughs> what, know, a, what an energy in this I'm house. I'm telling you. How about that praise team? How about that praise team? My Lord. Y'all speak my language. You, you can skip the gym today. You've already been there. Hey. <laughs> Lord, I tried to jump with those kids, and I did it as long as I could. It, it became one of those after a minute. <laughs> Oh, I can't do it like I used to, but I'm still going to give it an effort. <laughs> Our son said recently we have a prayer before um, service, and they had he was talking to all the the, the serve team that morning, and, and he's talking, he said, you know, we really need to be into the praise and worship. You know, we're the leaders. And he's talking about all that, and he's talking about how to, you know, just get really get into it and just lead the people. And he said, if you don't know how to do it, just watch Mom. <laughs> Just watch, Mom. And you know what? That was such a compliment to me because I love to worship. Listen, I love to worship because I know where he brought me from. Amen. And and because of that, um, and and, and I I say this all the time, there's there's certain things that God, I love to be creative and and create things. and, And for us with Empowering Life Ministries, and I know that some of you know that we transitioned our church four years ago. In uh, September, be four years, right? That's right. Yes. And so we're doing this now, and whatever this is, I don't know what it is. We're just, we just do it. Someone asked me about the podcast this morning, so I'll tell you a little bit about that. It's called Empower Life Ministries. You can find that on Apple and Spotify and just wherever you can get podcasts. It's uh, Monday through Friday. It's about eight to ten minutes. It's uh, meant to be a devotional teaching and all of that. Discipling devotional is what our, our son calls it. I personally don't know if it's a comedy show or a ministry. I, it's fun. <laughs> it's that. It's, it's fun. that. That we have, we're, in, we're really enjoying that journey. But I was one of the songs that you sang this morning just hit me, and Bishop, you brought reference to it. It's about, you know, God is love and that we're, we're loved. And a few weeks ago, probably about, about almost three months ago, I was um, talking with our admin for Empowering Life Ministries, and I was telling her, I said, Lynn, I said, I really feel like the Lord wants me to do another T-shirt. I, I th- I'm a visual person. I, I love visuals. And so I was just praying about it and praying about it, and I came across the scripture that I've read a thousand and one times. It says, perfect love cast out all fear. And I was sitting there, and I was meditating that. I, I'm a meditator. I, I put it in, and then I, I just meditate on it, and as they say, just chew on it a little bit. And I'm sitting there, and I'm just reading over that word and meditating it. The perfect love casts out all fear. And perfect love casts out all fear. And the Lord said, Donna, do you believe that? I said, believe what, Father? He said, do you believe that you're perfectly loved? Do you, do you believe that you're perfectly loved? And it, I just, and I was sitting there, I was thinking, Yes, I do believe I'm perfectly loved. Then he said, you're fearless. And that's where that came from. And it has the exclamation on the end of it because it's a statement. 
Because I believe with all of my heart, I refuse to call myself anything other than what the Lord calls me. Amen. And, and I know, you know, with all of us have backgrounds. And my background, I came from a very abusive, physically and verbally abusive home growing up. And I just made the decision, I will not be bitter, I will be better. Yes. Amen. Amen. I will not. No, no, no. That's that. That was that was then. This is now, and God, God has really brought things through. And so the other shirt that that I did before that was was overcomer because I cannot find in the Word of God where God ever called me a victim. Come on, Amen. God never calls you a victim. God never called me a survivor. I'm I'm okay with if if that's what you you know whatever the culture which we're going to talk about in a minute is talking about. But God didn't call me that. But I can show you in the Word of God where He calls me an overcomer. Amen. I can show you in the Word of God where He says I'm perfectly loved. So that makes me fearless. <laughs> and so that's where that came from. I know this. And, and all the ladies said, oh, this is a, no, the guy said that's a pretty pink. And all the ladies go, no, that's raspberry. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah, but you guys too, we got you covered. But the other one was, and, and I, hadn't, I don't even have these back there, but I, I told Lynn, I said, okay, the fearless is a statement. That's talking about me. And we have to order these. But the other one says, be fearless. So all the ladies like the little bougie bling on there. Because <laughs> now I'm talking to you. <laughs> this is who you need to be. <laughs> so we do have some product in the back. And, and do you want to say about those? Well, of course I do. You go for it. I was waiting I didn't my know turn. If, well, I don't know if you want me to say it or you say it. <laughs> no, you know what? Uh, first of all, I want to say what an honor it was to meet yes. with all the leaders in here last night. Awesome. It was a rich time. It was a great time. And it's what awesome people you guys are. And, you know, that's why this church looks like it looks. That's, right. that's why it flows like it flows. And uh, such a unity in that and such a heart uh, with everyone. And I, I'm just thankful for that. Yeah. And... Uh, and we count it such an honor. Bless Bishop and, and Ray so much for giving us the opportunity to be here. I count it a great honor yes. to be in this house. This is a house of excellence. Yes. And uh, you know it when you walk in the doors. Yes, you do. Amen. People love it on you as soon as you get in the door and you feel it all over. It. It. Amen. Yes. That's a good thing. I've had people tell me, say, I visited this church and nobody ever spoke nobody to me. Did. And I thought, good Lord, I can't imagine that. They Not feel like we're house. violating them when they come to our house. <laughs> you know? But let me give you just a little background about us and stuff, and even these products. I do have uh, three books that I have back here at the product table that's available if you'd like to get them. My newest one is Navigating Grace. And, uh, and, and you know what? Uh, who would have thunk it that the Lord would use somebody like me to write a book or anything like that? I'm just, I'm just being r real honest with you. We started out... Our story, we're pregnant at 16 years old and married. March the 11th, we just had our 47th anniversary. <clears throat> I tried to, I tried to, I was in my junior year, I tried to stay in school and work. I had to forge my birth certificate, get on at a local plant. And, uh, and just being honest, it's, that's life. That's the way it was. And, uh. You know, I forged my birth certificate, got hired there, worked midnight shift, and went to school during the day. That lasted a whole month. Because I was dragging my tracks out, man. I met my, remember the guy that made the donuts? He'd meet himself at the door. <laughs> that was me. But, you know, I, I, I dropped out of school, ended up getting a GED, and uh, Don and I ended up getting our bachelor's degree in theology and Bible and biblical studies and, and stuff, and... Uh, when we got married, her mom said that it won't last a year. Her sister said it won't last six months, so we was going to make it make two years just to spite them. <laughs> right? But the grace of God just overrun our life. I, I'm going to tell you what, I was traveling in a band. I was traveling in a band. We were gone most of the time, just making a circuit, playing music and stuff. Uh, we ended up at the end of it. How I many you know young people don't have money? Older people have money, so we hired them for the Grand Ole Opry and started playing for country music stars. So we'd meet them as the band. We'd learn all their stuff and do the shows and all that stuff. But my whole life turned into alcohol and drugs and everything else during that time. I was I wasn't a present dad at home. Uh, when I but the thing about it, uh, I think Donnie was four years old when I got saved. When you got saved, tell the story. <laughs> How old was he when I got saved? Well, he got saved in 82. 
Yeah. So anyway, he was a kid. He was almost. He was, he was a almost kid. six. But anyway, the thing about it is, uh, after I gave my heart to the Lord, our life changed yep. so much, you know, yep. because she got saved before I did, about a year, and uh, you know, it ruined our life because she wouldn't go to she wouldn't go to the bars with me anymore, and she wouldn't do, you know, all that. Everything just changed, and it's the grace of God that we're still together. Who would have thunk? I'm, I'm joking when I say thunk, okay? But who would have ever thought? that we would make 47 years. But, you know, it's God working in our life. So, so in that, the, these books are my heart, uh, things I put into them. This first one I did in the 90s called Who Are the Mighty Men? And uh, it just really speaks of David, his mighty men. Uh, a lot of things that was going on in the Gulf War during that time were in there about the walking in faith and having the scud missiles that they were using and all the d different things along that line about they'd never used them before so they had no idea how things were going to work how many of you know when you hadn't walked in your faith you don't know how it's going to work right uh, the next book i wrote was from glory to glory and uh, it talks about how that we're changed and the spirit of the lord does a work in us it's 10 different uh sermons that i had ministered in there that i go into and begin to speak about how God brings that transition in our yeah. life Amen. and the things that happen with us. And the last book I just finished was Navigating Grace because how many of you know when, <clears throat> when you come into this grace thing, it takes, it takes a minute for you to figure it out. Yeah. And you ain't really, I still ain't like, it, like I've got it all figured out now. But there's a <laughs> lot of things I believe that need, uh, need to be looked at. We're going to talk about some of those things today because the title of our message is the heart of the Father, culture wars. Yeah. Yeah. How many of you know there's culture wars going on right now? You, the enemy's working in every way that he can to try to get you or your children. <laughs> and they use, how many of y'all learned about the seven mountains of influence, the Word of God? You know, we know from the Word of God. Everywhere we're at, wherever God's got you, that's your mission field. Yeah, that's your, and that's where you work. That's your mountain. And when you look into the influence of the media, and what they have over our children, even in shaping our own lives and the way we think about things. Yes. Yes. Uh, Bishop was talking about how God is a good God, and he's always a good God. Yes, God's hand was on me before I ever got saved. Yes. That's how I got saved, because he was chasing me around everywhere I went. And the funny thing about all that is that well, all our band and stuff, when we were drinking around the table and stuff like that after shows and stuff, you know what we ended up talking about? The Bible. <laughs> That's the truth. I was under such conviction it was ridiculous, but it was just God was after me. My wife was after me. People were hurting me. I mean, they were coming to my house asking me to come to church. <laughs> I mean, they were really, it was uh, this, the influence of God uh, that, that came over me and dealt with me so gently. I mean, so gently he didn't force me to do anything. And then I think about the way that I've looked at grace over the years and the way I looked at God over the years. Things just changed drastically. I, how many of you think different about God right now than you did before? You know, I think it's ever-changing in our life because of our relationship growing in Him. I'm, amen. We need to be a compassionate people. Uh, you know, I, today we were going to talk about culture wars a little bit and the heart of the Father because you can't, I don't think you can talk about one without talking about the other. Everybody say God's in the mix. And right now, things going on, you know, just, just think about, I hope you don't watch the news, but I watch the news all the time. <laughs> oh, but when you see, time. But when you see things going on <laughs> in the earth right now, you see that war. You see that battle and everything that's going on. And, uh, you know, right now, they've made it in the earth right now to where everybody has a mindset that mm -hmm. the world owes them something, right? And there's no consequence for any action in their life. Amen. No How many of you know there's going to be consequences? Yeah. There's going to be consequences, but they're making it to where, I mean, on the news the other day, they had a guy that went in and robbed the store, and a guy ended up shooting him, and the guy that owned the store is the one that got jailed. <laughs> they make arrests for people that do things right now, but when they put them in there, they let them go, no bail thing, and just no consequence right. what's going on, so everybody expects that. How many of you know if you feed that, then they're going to think they're entitled to do anything they want to do. Yes. Amen? Now, this ain't, I ain't being negative. Please hear my heart and what I'm trying to say to you. But, you know, Titus says that the grace of God, 
that brings us to salvation, right? It's taught us to deny ungodliness. God's doing a work in us. We might not be at the same place, you know, as far as our mentality and the work that God's done in us, but how many of you know that God brings those changes as you grow in Him and He don't forsake you in the middle of something you've got doing wrong or something you're thinking about the wrong way. It's the way you look at people. It's the way you see people. It might be an old chunk of coal, but by, I'm telling you by the glory of God, we can see them as the diamond that God's called them to be. Amen. We see the potential that's in their life. So we look at it different. I'm telling you right now, when I see things going on, it's totally a different mentality that I have toward those things. And, and you know, there's a scripture in Isaiah 5 and 20. Israel and Judah had basically separated from each other. They've moved into idolatry, got all these things going on. And Isaiah prophesied, said, Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil, and put darkness for light and light for darkness, and put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Everybody say it's a flip. It's a flip. So what's going on in that whole situation, I know this was to them, it's not written to us. Old covenant, right? But how many of you know the principle is the same? You know, uh, it's a mentality that starts taking place to where you elevate something. It's either going to be you elevate righteousness, you elevate the Lord Jesus Christ, or you elevate your lust, you elevate your struggle, whatever those things are. And how many of you know in the middle of that, God starts uh, ministering to us? And you know, it bothers me because I see some of that trying to bleed into the house of God. Um, you know, I don't even know, hadn't talked to Bishop what you think about that, but some of the messages right now is there's no hell, some, no consequence. All right, and I know the words, believe me, I know the words, grave, Hades, uh, you know, Sheol, all this, but I'm telling you right now, there's a separation that happens with sheep and goats. You know, when you see through the Word of God, there's something that's taking place in that, and uh, it's not that God's wanting to forsake them, it's he's wanting to love them. Yeah. He's wanting to bring them in is what he's wanting to do. They're t- teaching out there right now that's saying that the Bible is not infallible, that yeah. some of the authors like Moses, uh, God didn't really say that through them. They're just speaking out of their own heart. Yeah. How many of you know, <laughs> how many of you know it's a slippery slope? Yeah. When we move places like that, it becomes a slippery slope. And some of the things that you're trying to say, because, you know, when it comes down to it, because I talked with a gentleman, I was in a conference, one guy started preaching that stuff, talked with him after the conference and everything, and uh, I said, well, listen, if it comes down to it, I've got Moses and I've got you. I'm going to believe Moses. <laughs> Amen? I'm going to believe Moses. And I know, I know we've moved into a new covenant, but there's principles of the Word of God that still work. Still work. Amen? Different things like that still happen in our lives, and... And, uh, you know, it wants to bring us to things that put us back to the same bondage that God brought us out of. Right. Amen? Same bondage, you know. And, and now, you know, I know we're not under the law, but how many of you know there's the law of the spirit of life? So life is the law yeah. that we're under now that he's brought us to. But God's always been a God of order. So just think in the natural about this. When you came here today, you probably stopped at a traffic light. You probably stopped at a stop sign. It protected you and it protected the people because of the things that were ordered in that for that to happen, right? I thank God for traffic lights. <laughs> I thank God for stop signs. Amen? Because it's protected me and God's order does the same thing in our life when we allow that to manifest. Amen? And listen, if we don't stop at the stop sign because I have freedom, I can just run that stop sign. Well, I might get crashed into or I might get a ticket. They will be a consequence to the actions that I put forth. Does that make any sense to you? But I'm telling you, we serve a loving Father, and He's a good God. And we need the heart of the Father. My daughter loves her daddy. I mean, big time. When she was about five years old, she's, what is she, 42? 44. I can't keep up with all of it, okay? I'm just sorry. They just keep getting older. (laughs) <laughs> they're about to catch up with me. You know, they're almost old as I am now. The only good thing about having kids when you were 16 years old is you could still beat them in basketball when they're a teenager. <laughs> She's 42. I was right. 
<laughs> but when she was about five years old, I'm telling you, I, I, I mess with my kids all the time. She would get in the back hallway, back where her bedroom was, and she'd put her mom's little majorette uniform on and get a baton. And she would stand there. I'd be in the kitchen with Donna or something. She'd go, introducing. <laughs> and I told Donna, I said, watch She'd wait. I said, watch this. Introducing. <laughs> I said, <laughs> I said, ladies and gentlemen, Tasha Barber. And then I'd go, she'd come through the, she'd come all the way in the kitchen going around the table. All that's happening the whole time. And I, I told Don, I said, what's this? She kept going. She'd go around there. She'd go in the dining room, go around the coffee table. Boom, 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 boom. So all of a sudden I went, boom, 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 boom. I got her in a run. I mean, I got her in a run. And then finally, finally I started going, boom, 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 boom. And she was like, boom, 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 boom. I don't know why, but her tongue was how she kept beating her. <laughs> All that going on. But the reason I'm telling you that story is she was willing to the march to the heartbeat of her father. It didn't matter how fast I go. It didn't matter how slow I would go. She was in it. She was in it. And how many of you know that's what we need to be with God? We need to have the... The heart, we need to march to the heartbeat of the Father. Yes. We need to be like John who laid his head on his bosom. Yes. Amen. We need to be so intimate with him in that relationship. And to this day at 42 years old, she comes to the house, she still sits in my lap. She loves her daddy. She, no, she loves her mom a little. <laughs> but I'm her favorite, just like the father. I'm his favorite too. <laughs> Saying all of that, I don't know what all that was, but whatever it is. Um, the thing about it is, is when you talk about culture, and I shared a little bit of this last night in the leadership thing, is because the culture, let me just give you a definition. And what I did is I looked up culture and looked up just several different things because we can use the word all day long, but till we get the understanding of it, and he brought out the first part of it. He talked about the negative side of it and then the positive side of it. But here's actually the definition. To blend into a functioning pattern of knowledge. This next one's going to get you. Attitudes, actions, and beliefs. Now, here's the purpose. In order to have the maximum learning to develop succeeding generations. Yeah. In order to develop the learning to de the learning to develop the succeeding generations. Because if we want to change the culture around us, it does not start in the church, it starts in the home. And every single time if we start building that culture in our homes, then what we're going to do is we're going to teach our children to dance to the heartbeat of their father. Yeah. And they're going to be able to, to succeed in what they are developing, what we are developing in them, because then they're going to understand what the next generation does. If you look through the Word of God, you don't find it way back in the Old Covenant where that they sent their children out to go learn something. They taught their children... And it says it's passed down from generation to generation to generation. Somewhere along the line, the link got broke. And we as the body of Christ are the ones to restore that. Because we need to understand that every single one of us, every single one of our children, every single one of our grandchildren, and for now, every single one of our great-grandchildren. Have mercy. Have mercy. Sweet <laughs> Jesus, how did that happen? I'm still shaking my head. But our, one of our granddaughters, Molly Beth, came to me one day. This was several years ago, and I think she was about five years old. This, this is Tasha's daughter. She's walking through the house, and she looks at me, and she says, Nana, where did I come from? Now, 
immediately I'm thinking, I don't want to have this conversation with you. <laughs> You're five. I don't want to have this conversation with you. And so I'm standing there, and I know I must have had this look on my face, and she starts looking at me, and she was so inquisitive, and I don't even know what made her even ask the question. And the Holy Spirit began to minister to me, and I said, Molly, I said, you are a seed of the heart of God. She said, what? I said, yes. I said, God has all these seeds within him. And I said, in one day, he said, I need Molly Beth in the earth. So he pulled out of his heart a seed, and he gave that seed to your daddy, and daddy gave that seed to mommy, and she looked at me with a big eye. She said, and I grew in her belly. I said, yes, you did. And she said, and then I came out. I said, yes, you did. And I was thinking, thank you, Holy Spirit, because that's the, I did not want to have any other conversation. And I was so thankful she didn't ask me how Daddy gave Mommy the seed. <laughs> and it's okay. She didn't need to know. But in that... She just, there was just, I could see this joy come over her. And she turned to walk away and she turned back. She said, Nana, I came from heaven. Come on. Amen. I came. You came Amen. from the heart of God, a seed planted in the earth for such a time as this. And we are the culture changer. Yes, yes. We are the culture developers. That's what this is talking about. A functioning pattern as of knowledge, great, attitudes, and actions. Knowledge, attitudes, actions, knowledge, attitudes, actions, working together to form the pattern that has been placed in heaven as we usher heaven into the earth. Amen. Amen. As we usher heaven into into the earth and it may not look like everybody else but it's not supposed to because the patterns that the pattern has been given to your leadership is for developing the culture of this house and so I say to you this much when you're in your homes in your homes with your children with your grandchildren you introduce them to cheat to Jesus then you bring them to church and you fulfill the pattern in the earth Amen? We are the ones who are setting forth for the next generation and the next generation. Or if we can say it like this, the now generation. Absolutely. absolutely. The now generation. Well, you know, the thing about that is, is this. What we hear. Yeah. Everybody say what we hear. What affects what we know. Yes. Think about that for a second. Yes. What we hear, we, you, you know, uh, in the... Little children's church, be careful, little ears, what you hear. Be careful, little eyes, what you hear, right? That's where my mind went, went back to that. But like, the thing is, what we hear affects what we know, and what we know influences what we believe. Yes. And, yes. and, and how many of you know if we don't have the correct information we're hearing, we're not going to have the right kind of belief system built in our hearts? Yes, true. Because God is good all the time. Yeah. You know, I, when I came up, I came up in a church that was very legalistic, uh, Pentecostal church, very strict, you know, and stuff like that. And I'm not saying anything bad about them, but I'm just saying some of the things that were said is hard to relearn those things that get put into you in your belief system. But the one thing I've learned and what we've taught over 30 years is that, you know, when people, I remember people getting in trouble, getting in a mess, they wouldn't, they wouldn't come to the church for nothing. How many of you know when you make a mistake or you blow it, I don't care how bad you are, you need to run to the house of God. Yeah, come on. And the people in the house of God ought to be welcoming you with open arms, not talking about you, about something you did right, and you're not a Christian. If you was, you wouldn't have done that. Come no, on. we need to be loving them. We need to welcome them back in. We need to help hold them up like Aaron and her holding the arms up and said, you can make it. You can do it. God's going to help you get through this thing. Not banish them off. Not cut them off, but usher them back into the house of God because the sanctuary is a safe place. This is a safe place. And yeah, you, you did all that, but that's not who you are. You did all that. 
But that's not who you are. You walked away from mirror and forgot about what manner of you man you were, right? You just got to come back to the mirror. We'll help hold the mirror up to you. Amen. We'll we'll help you. We'll fix it up, man. We'll make it, we'll make it look good. We'll make if I had hair, I'd I'd. Go, I used to have hair down to here. I guess I was too vain to keep it. <laughs> oh, I could tell you some stories. <laughs> but what we hear affects what we know. What we know influences what we believe. And what we believe impacts what we do. Mm-hmm. All right. Now, last night, speaking to some of the leaders, that's one of the things I kind of honed in on a little bit because the things that we try to carry with us as baggage from our past, yes. it keeps us from doing some of the things in our heart to do. Yes. Because we get in the thing of I'm, I'm not worthy. Yeah. How could God use me? All those things that works in your mind, the, all they do is imprison you. Yes. You know, you know what I've learned? <clears throat> if you go ahead and put those things in the light, that's how you get free. Yes. Yep. We want to hide those things out of shame, but I'm going to tell you right now, shame off you. Not shame on you, shame off you. Get off. Well, you did all, you know, we think, that, and I believe the enemy works against us in our thinking like that. We think that, you know, that's going to make us look bad and people know this, they won't think as good of me anymore. Listen, right. ain't a one of us in here ain't dealt with issues and how things go in our life. I mean, every one of us struggle from the pulpit to the door. Yep. Amen. And it takes the same God. Amen, to make that transformation in our life and in our minds because I don't care to be exposed. I'm naked before God already. Before I ever said a word, I was already there. Before I realized what he had already done in my life. Freedom's there. You just got to believe it and walk in it. Yes, It belongs to you. He paid for you to have that. Yes, But your mind try to work against you. It'll try to devalue you. And make you feel like you can't when I'm telling you today you can. I don't care what it is, you can. Greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. Yes. We got to put the stinking thinking behind us because God is for us and not against us. He's not looking to <laughs> and boom us out when we mess up. I mean, that's the way I was brought up. God's looking, you know, making a mistake. Well, you're out. Yep. You're out. But that's not the God I know. That used to be the God that I was introduced to. Yes. But I found after I spent a little time with him and in the word of God, that wasn't him at all. Right Amen. He's long-suffering. He's merciful. And mercy rejoices against judgment. Yes. He's a good, good God. Yep. Hallelujah. Come on. Somebody say yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. It's talking about the thinking there. If we look back in Proverbs 23 and 7, the word of God says, as a man thinks... In his heart, so is he. And sometimes we, when we don't study the Word of God the way we need to, and I, I'm, I'm a word nerd. I love to look at words and dissect them and all those different things because I get the full understanding of what God is trying to tell me. And that's where it began to change me and shift me in my thinking and thinking about, you know, like I said, the, the, how I was raised and the things that I walked through as a child, even at the time, up until the time we got married, he, he, couldn't, he couldn't even comprehend. He really thought that some of the stories were not as like, well, maybe she's kind of exaggerating that a little bit until yeah. he got faced with one of, those, one of those situations himself. Well, I got faced with it when I went to the house and talked to her mom, <laughs> and she met me at the door and said, I'm going to kill you. <laughs> yes. Yes, and so for him, he didn't understand how that, that had warped my thinking because, you know, I'll tell you something. When, you, when you're in a household and you're in those... And thank, I thank God. Now, listen, I want to say this. I want to thank God for the salvation of my mom. She's gone on to be with the Lord now. Yep. She got saved after I was married and had children. But God radically saved her. Yep. Radically saved her. Radically saved her. 
And she prayed. She changed the next generation because she prayed all of us into the kingdom. That's right. That woman was a prayer warrior, but she carried that cloak of shame for a long time. And we would just tell you, Mama, all is gone. All is forgotten. But, you know, but in those type areas of growing up as a child and being told that you were worthless and in, in the, in the beatings and the gun to your face and all those different things, it messes with your thinking. And so when I read scriptures like, watch this, out of Proverbs 23 and 7, as a man thinks in his heart, in his mind, his will, and his emotions. Yeah. Emotions, so is he. So the word thinks there or thinketh there is pretty interesting because actually it means the gatekeeper. As a man allows the gatekeeper, come on, yeah. As a man or woman allows the gatekeeper, those thoughts, you are either locking up the thoughts of the soul realm and loosing the thoughts of the spiritual realm, or you're locking up those thoughts from God that says you're good, you're loved, you're worthy, you're blessed, you're highly favored. Come on, church. All yep. those things that he thinks about you. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Or you're releasing what you have been told through the negative culture. But another word, another definition for the word think of there, and I thought this was pretty good, actually means janitor. So as a man looses the janitor in his heart... Come on, somebody needs some cleaning in your heart. As a man looses the janitor... Of the Holy Spirit in your life yeah. and changes your stinking thinking, changes that unworthy to worthy, changes that 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 negative connotation about everything that God says about you. Yeah. Come on, somebody Come needs on. to loose the janitor today. Come on, we need to loose the janitor in our minds, in our thinking. And as we do, you know, it's, a, it's amazing. I was doing a mentoring with a young lady the other day. It's just, she's walking through a divorce. Her husband just, he just, he was, he just, uh, he used to be a praise and worship leader. And he just walked out on his family. Three kids, wife and three kids just walked out on him. Left the church and just walked out. And now, you know, so now she's in this intensive healing and mentoring with me. And she said to me, we're sitting there talking the other day. And I, I just began to say to her, and I said, these are the things. And I was sharing with her what I'm sharing with you. Say that I'm fearless. Say that I'm worthy. Until you believe it. Yeah. Say it until you believe it. Yeah. And she looked at me with tears rolling down her face. And she said, you know, I tell my kids that every day. But I can't see it for me. There was a break. There was a break in the culture that began to talk about exactly what Bishop said earlier. It's we went from being that child to being talked about how Jesus loves you. He's, he's always for you. He's always on your side. You are the most precious treasure in the world. And then we get to big church and like, you better do it this way and you better do it that way and you better clean up your life and you're worthless. And you're... There was a break. So what we do is we come in and we start changing. And we change first in our thinking as we close up, as we let the gatekeeper to our soul and the janitor of our heart go to work. I told, I told the leadership team last night, everything you're looking at in culture right now, I, I get tickled. I really do. Because I, I read some things on Facebook, and I'm like, I, I can't even look at that. I, I just, I just, everybody else that way too. I'm like, no, oh, no, no, no. Give me a word, you know. <laughs> word and spirit. Oh, there you are. Preach. Come on, Bishop. Come on, Pastor Ray. Preach. I told you, I stalk y'all. I'm like, I need some positivity. <laughs> Give me some word. But I was telling the leadership team last night, is we got to shift it because we're, the culture says we need balance in our lives. We need some balance. And nothing could be further from the truth, church. We don't need the balance of the spirit and the soul. 
We don't need it balanced in our lives. We need the spirit man. We need the spirit man to rise. And we need it, we need it telling that soul rim, you're going to think like I tell you to think. You're going to do what I tell you to do. You're going to have the attitude I say you need to have. I'm going to raise you up into a heaven. You are seated in heavenly places. This is who you really are. You don't need that balance of the soul and spirit. You need to let that spirit man push you up to that seated place of where you really belong. Woo, come on. We're not looking for balance. We're looking to bring heaven to earth. Heaven to earth. Heaven to earth. Anybody home up here? <laughs> Come on. As we, we say in our place, bring your brain to church. Amen. 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 Woo, be, Jesus. You know the thing, Luke 21, 19 says, In your patience, possess your souls. Possess Amen. How many of you know we're taking authority on those things? Yeah. As we've been renewing our mind, amen, according to Romans 12 and 1, right? We're renewing our mind with the Word of God. That's taking possession of our soul. It's getting a different way to look at things. You get a whole, You can start looking through the Word of God and you start seeing through the lens of God's eyes in the way things are. Your soul, man, starts becoming submitted to your spirit, man. I'm not going to be moved what I'm thinking, what I'm feeling, and all those things. I'm going to be moved what the Word of God, amen, has declared over me. Amen. Let that have to allow that to happen. How many of you know Jesus taught visualization? Yep. It's important to visualize things. I'll give you an example in that. He talked about if a man looks upon a woman to lust after her, he's already committed adultery in his heart, right? It's already happened. Well, I didn't do anything. Yeah, you did. <laughs> you did it. You did it here. See, that's the thing about people talking about the law being, uh, the law being really deep into people. The law was superficial. Jesus is concerned about our inner man. Not We can put on a face. We can dress up in our robes and have our phylacteries and all this other stuff. Our bandanas that have the scripture written on them. We can look the part and be in a mess inside. Jesus came to get to the heart of the matter. And he talked about visualizing. But see, we don't need to leave that in that area. Oh, that's tough. No, that's wonderful. Because if that works on the negative side of those things, how many of you know it works the same way on the positive side of those things? So if I visualize myself coming out of poverty, I visualize myself coming out of sickness and attacks of disease and different things like that, how many of you know the same thing's going to work on the flip of the coin in that thing? I am who God says I am. I can do what God says I can do. Amen? I'm not bound. I'm free. I'm not sick. I'm healed. Amen. Amen. So we let that visualization start taking place in our lives. So, you know, what we see affects our lives. I remember when I first got saved, started going to church, it was kind of like an Assembly of God church. Our preacher tried to be Jimmy Swaggart back then. Jimmy, he was the big thing. He was the big thing back then. And he was a great pastor. He He was an evangelist. He could fill that church up, but he couldn't keep anybody. You know, but he could win souls. They were some of the most loving people. They had a, a band that played, and they were uh, still guitars. Man, they could make the hair stand up on your arms and the back of your neck when they're <laughs> giving an altar call. I'm, I'm just saying, it was a powerful, powerful church. And, and in that, <coughs> you learn a lot through those things. There was a man that went to that church that led singing. Just a wonderful man. Good husband, good daddy. He affected my life. Now, he didn't speak a word to me as far as like speaking something into my life. He just lived it. And I thought about, man, I'll tell you what, that's, that's something I need to look to. Something I need to pattern after because he loved God. He loved his family. Amen? But visualization, it's important. You need to see, you need to see what God sees. You need to see how God sees you. Yeah. Amen. I'm going to say something. You know, God uses visualization all through Scripture. Yeah. Do you remember that Joseph's dad gave him a coat of many colors? Yeah. It's visual. It's visual of covenant. Because yeah. it's a rainbow. Yeah. So he gave him a visual to see those things. And it let him know something. But it not only let him know something, it let all the other people that saw it. No, so that's why I put the jealousy in his brothers 
and they hated him for his dreams and all those things. Uh, Jacob placed street rods when they went to conceive at the at the water troughs and everything. He put a visual before them, and when the animals saw the visual, that's what they produced. When they came to feast, yeah. what they saw is what they became. Now, I'm not being negative. I really want you to hear my heart, okay? Let me finish before you <laughs> develop an opinion. Disclaimer. God's, ch <laughs> God's changed my heart so much. And uh, I I'm just telling you, I think as a church, this is why we need to look at some things. I'm gonna give you, this is my opinion. It's in this book called Navigating Grace, about chapter 7, somewhere in there. I deal with the whole subject. But right now, there's such a push for the LBGTQ community, mm -hmm. transgender, all kinds of different things like that. And just in a nutshell, it's a mistaken identity. Yeah. It's yeah. really what it is, a mistaken identity. But how many of you know that's happened through visualization? Yeah. They see others and they're putting it out before our children. Listen, I've got pastor friends who have children that's got caught up in this and it's ripping their heart out yes. because of where it takes them to. Amen? So how many of you know they're trying to develop a culture and they're trying to create a new normal? Right, right. Yeah. It's never been a normal thing. No. That's, that's never been the way God established for life to be. And, and it's, <clears throat> I'm not even going to say that. I'm just going to move on. But I want to tell you this. What you'll find out, and this is where my heart is, and it's changed my attitude toward people that get drawn into that. Did you know, have you ever heard of uh, <clears throat> uh, Dr. Caroline Leaf? Yeah. Tremendous, tre tremendous woman of God. She's got a book out. She's got a book out called Switch on Your Brain. And she, she touches on this subject a little bit. And this is one of the things that it says. And this was a study done by UCLA. And it says this about this. Um, the Williams Institute of UCLA School of Law found that most suicide attempts, 61% among the LBGT community, occurred within five years of accepting their sexual minority identity. The study showed that suicide attempts were 31% for those 18 to 25 years old. And I'm telling you, that breaks my heart. It breaks my heart. And it's not because of the condemnation from without. No. It's from, from the condemnation within. Yes. Amen? Oh, I didn't mean to kill this room. I didn't mean to... Oh, Lord. I'm saying this in a positive way because there's an agenda we need to reach that community. Yes. We've got something to bring them. Listen, I'm going to tell you in, in, in my ministry... I have been effective with two men that I've ministered to that were dealing in that area, that walked away from that lifestyle, just spending a little time with them, just spending a little time with them talking about what the Word of God says because most of them said, one of them told me in particular because I was going over some scripture talking with him about it, how much God loved him, what a, what a gift he was, tremendous, tremendous yes. gift. And just sharing with him. And I'm telling you, that man broke and just wept. Yes. He wept for the passion that was working in his heart. Yeah. You know. And that, that man turned from that lifestyle. Yes. Ended up marrying a woman. They've got children now. And he's a worship leader in a church. Yeah. That's right. Another man was being drawn into uh, homosexual pornography. Things like that. Now listen, that's, this is the power of that spirit that tries to work over their lives because, you know, he had never been with a man, never done anything like that as far as physically or anything. He just, what he was putting in his eyes was creating an appetite. Yep. Amen? Because that's what was working in his heart. And when we had a conversation, really went into all those things, I convinced him that the, God loves him. God has not rejected him. Yep. That the alienation that was trying to work in his life over the situation that was going on and everything, it didn't have to be that way. 
And, you know, it's, it's a lot more than that, you know, guys. Yes. But I'm, te- I'm just in a nutshell. I'm telling you, it can take place. Yes. Change can happen in that. Because if you ever see the love of God, hatred's not going to deliver yeah. anybody. No. Disgust is not going to deliver anybody. No. You know? And I'm not condoning any of those things. I, I think it's wrong. I think it's messed up. I think it, it's mixed up. All those things, but you know, we better move in the love of God when we deal with anything. Yes. And if you don't, you'll never, you'll never uh, be effective and have influence in somebody's life. Now, let me bring that home to us, because the the next part of that story is, is that his baby sister, who was three years younger than him, dealt with homosexuality for over forty years. And we had talked to her and ministered to her. She would. It was such a confusion in her. It was such a shame in her. And about 10 years ago, she just got completely and totally delivered. And we were just, she just transformed into this completely different person. And so I went and I sat down with her and I asked her, now watch this. This is what we're talking. I asked her, I said, what was the difference? What was the change? She said, you know, you guys always talked about you loved me. You never, you never rejected me. You never, but she said, I went to the Lord. Now watch this. I went to the Lord. Yep. And I just began to talk to him. And she said, one day I got brave enough to ask him, just give me the truth. I only want truth. She said it was my constant contact with my father and learning from him when she said, when I got real with me and I really wanted truth, she said it was just, she said, I felt just his love come over me. And she said, I felt it changing me. She said, so to reach anyone in this situation It's all about love. She said, but when I made the decision to have constant contact with him, she said, and I wanted nothing but truth. She said, it just fell into me. She said, every desire that went against the love and the nature of God, she said, I don't know how to tell you this. She said, but it just left me. She said, it, she said, all of a sudden, my Partner, I couldn't even look at them the same anymore. She said, I looked at that woman and said, that's my sister in the Lord. She said, but it was the constant contact that changed it and wanting truth. And so I want to tell you something. How do we birth the kingdom? The kingdom culture is by constant contact. Constant contact. And that took me to a story. Now, in, in First Kings, I'm not going to read the whole story, but in First Kings chapter 10 and verse 1, this is where Solomon's culture and the fame of his culture is being shed abroad everywhere. And verse 1 says, When the queen of Sheba, listen to this, heard of the constant connection of the fame of Solomon with the name of of the Lord. Yeah. Watch that. When she heard of the constant connection of the fame of Solomon was connected with the name of the Lord, it says she came to him. You want him to come? There needs to be a constant connection yeah. between us, between the Lord and us, and the fame of the house will flow out to others. Yeah. Yeah. And it says that she came along and she, she got all this wisdom from him. But then she, it says she saw his wisdom. I thought, how do you see wisdom? And the Lord said, continue reading because this is what it says. She saw, this is what she saw. She saw how the house was built. She saw the food on the table. She saw what was being fed. She saw the seating or the ministers. She saw all the elders. She saw all the officials and how they were, uh, how they were uh, 
doing the practice of everything that they did every day. She saw the attendance of the people and how they were attending to every need. She saw the servants and how they were carrying themselves. She saw their apparel. It says she saw his cupbearers. But then the seventh thing she saw, she saw his ascent by which he went up to the house of the Lord. Come on. Come on. She saw and watched how the people worshiped. And she said, The half has not been told. How do we change the culture outside these four walls? The fame of our constant connection between us and Him will change our relationship to them. How we relate to Him will change how we relate to them. Stand on your feet this morning. How many of you know that whole nation's culture was changed by men of God? Yeah. And God used their gift, yeah. Joseph in Egypt. Mm-hmm. Amen? Yes. Daniel in Babylon. Yeah. The kings are declaring, yes. your, God your God is God. Yes. Amen? Yes. Their influence of the yeah, gifts that they had that they used, the dreamer finally got to the dream. And it saved many people alive. Yes, Amen. See, the thing about what God does in that in changing culture, it's to save people. Yes. It's to 